Hey there, this is Arthur Hill, Chief Technical Strategist at TrendInvestorPro.com. You are tuned in to Next Level Charting. Thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. If you're watching this video on YouTube and you like it, of course, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. So today we're going to dive into the Stoke Close Indicator. I'm going to show you some examples. I'm going to show you some back test results. And I'm going to show you some recent signals and some of the ARC ETFs. So I'm going to start by showing a few examples of the Stoke Close Indicator in action. And this is my preferred trend following indicator when it comes to ETFs. So here we can see in this Stock Charts ACP chart, we've got Stoke Close in the indicator window. And it's set at 125 periods. And this is basically the level of the close relative to the high-low range over 125 days. And it's only using closing prices. So none of these intraday spikes are counted. It's only the close. And so I take that indicator over 125 days. I smooth it with a five-day moving average because that removes some of the whipsaws and smooths out some of the signals. And I think it performs better over time. So basically, a Stoke Co's bullish signal triggers when you move above 60, as we did here in the middle of June. And this is IGV, the software ETF. And a bearish signal occurs when you move below 40. So when you're below 40, you're clearly in the lower half of that 125-day range, if you will. When you're above 60, you're clearly in the upper half. And so that gives you an upward bias, an uptrend. When you go below 40, that gives you a clear downward bias and a downtrend signal. Now, as with all trend-following indicators, there are going to be whipsaws. And the way trend-following works is the assumption is that your big gains are going to pay for those whipsaws over time, and you're going to make money in the end. So here we can see a whipsaw. We got a sell signal there at the end of March, and then we got a buy signal at the beginning of April, and that didn't last long because we got the sell signal here. So you'd say, oh man, got out, got in, okay, got out, I'm getting tired, I'm getting whipsawed, and then you get this signal. And this signal was a dandy because you can see that the software ETF is one of the top performing ETFs since this signal triggered. And so that's the way trend following works. You're going to capture a few big trends, and those are going to pay for the losses. Now, it isn't all milk and honey, if you will. Here is iBuy, and I'll give you an example of a losing trade. This is the uh, retail, the, the online retail ETF. So you got a bearish signal there in the middle of May. And then you got a bullish signal there in the end of June, and that didn't work out, and it's back on a bearish signal in August. And you can see on the price chart, you know, you had what looked like a big move up, but you didn't take out that high, and then you came down. But you know what? Trend-following signals don't care about that. You're only looking at the signals generated by the Stoke Close Indicator. And you don't know which ones are going to work and which ones are going to fail. You just take them until they are proven otherwise. And so Stoke Close is proven otherwise when it goes below 40. Now, what's very interesting is when I was going over the Stoke Close signal table at TrendInvestorPro.com, which I'll show you in a minute, I noticed that the ARC ETFs were triggering bullish signals. And these ETFs have been lagging for quite some time. This is ARKK. This is the Innovation ETF. And it triggered bearish there at the end of March when it moved below 40. And it's been staying below that 60 line until here in the latter part of August when it moved above. So we've got a bullish signal there as far as ARKK is concerned. And if we look at the chart here, we can see a big advance and then what looks like some sort of a triangle, wedgie-like consolidation, more triangly, and we're breaking out. So we had a pretty big move up, and we got a triangle breakout working. So it looks like ARC Innovation is trying to turn the corner here. 
Now, as far as this Stoke close indicator and getting access, if you go down to the right hand corner, you click on the plugins icon, and there you can see the plugins available for Stock Charts ACP. And then over on the upper left, there are the chart settings, and you can change the settings if you want. But my sweet spot when it comes to trend following indicators is this three to six month time frame. Three months, two months, one month, that's short. It's too short. That's mean reversion territory. But getting out to three, four, five, six months, you're getting into more of a trend following stage and you can catch the signals quick enough. You're still going to get whipsaws, uh, but you can also adjust these settings to see how you like them and see what might fit your style. So I have tested this indicator and this indicator has been around for over a year, around 15, 16 months. So we do have in sample and out of sample data for it on the trendinvestorpro.com website. But what I do is I run an all signals test. And with an all signals test, what you do is you just take a nominal thousand dollar position in each signal. And you look at the percentage of winners, the percentage of losers, the average gain, the average loss, and the profit factor. And that kind of tells you if it's a system that you want to work with further. And so I did that on a basket of ETFs, around 125 ETFs that have been carefully selected. So there's not as too much overlap. Of course, there's going to be some overlap. Uh, but I want to include a wide swath of the market. And it's equity heavy a lot of stock-related ETFs. And so I ran this test from 2007 until 2021. That would be the end of August because I'm doing this on September 1st, but the last close was August 31st. And so if we run this and we look at some of the signals, here's SPY, for example, and there you can see Stoke close moving below 40 there in the early part of March. So you would have missed most of this decline. And it's a trend following indicator, so it's not going to catch the bottom. But it did get long here in the latter part of May around the 22nd and has stayed bullish here during this uptrend. And another one I'll show you. Let's look at semiconductors because that is an important group to watch. Here's SMH and I'll show the actual trade arrows for SMH. So you can see you would have gotten whipsawed here near that March low, but you would have gotten back in. And the indicator is such that it doesn't get whipsawed during a normal consolidation. As we saw with these ARC ETFs, it really moved uh, sharply higher from the COVID low until February 2021 and then corrected hard. They did trigger bearish, but semiconductors went through this consolidation and you can see Stoke close did not trigger bearish. And I'm using Amy Broker for this testing here. But anyhow, I ran the test and we can open up the results window to see, and I'll highlight a couple of key metrics here that I'm looking at. So first of all, we can see that we had 42% winners, 41.85%, 58% losers. And that's pretty normal for a trend following strategy. And the average profit was 24%, and the average loss was 6%. So you can see that your profits are a lot bigger than your losses. And then if you look at the average bars held, I'm going to go ahead and remove that. But you can see average bars held 229 for the winners, and the average bars held for the losers would be 50 so a lot shorter holding period when you have a loser, and that's letting your winners run, basically. And then one more I want to show you is the profit factor, which is kind of like your ex post reward to risk ratio. And this is pretty darn good, 2.96, almost three. And that means you're making $3 for every dollar that you're losing, a three to one ex post reward to risk ratio. So that tells me over time, this is a system that is viable and that shows promise. So here I am on the website of trendinvestorpro.com. I specialize in ETFs. I've got trend and momentum strategies, 
as well as mean reversion strategies once that trend is underway, looking for pullbacks within an uptrend. So this is the ranking and trend signals table. And I've got two groups of ETFs. I've got a core list, which is 125 plus ETFs. And I've got what I call an all weather list. And so if I just do all weather list, then I only see the all weather ETFs. And that's 50 ETFs, a very concentrated universe of ETFs that I use to run a strategy. But we'll just look at all of the ETFs right now. And there you can see all the uptrends right now. So if I click this column, I can see all the downtrends now. And I'll go to the prefix name first. And what you can do is you can scroll down this table and you can see where the uptrends and where the downtrends are. So we see small caps IWM, micro caps are in downtrends. But look at this, IJR has a new uptrend. There was a bit of a whipsaw there but it triggered bullish again on the 30th. New uptrend there, so that's interesting. And then we look at the technology group. These are all the technology-related ETFs, and they are in uptrends, and this is the number of bars that they've been in uptrends. So these uptrends range from 346 days for the 5G ETF to 13 days, 13 days for the robotic and automation ETF but a lot of strength in the technology-related ETFs. These semiconductor ETFs, 339 days for their uptrends. Now, if we move down, we can see some pockets of red forming. Aerospace and defense, we've got some red. Clean energy, we've got some red. But we can see QCLN triggered bullish recently. There's a new uptrend. And what caught my eye was looking at the ARC ETFs. Here are the oil and gas ETFs, and they are in downtrends. And if you look at the, I'll show you the ranking here in a second, uh, but I'm going down to the ARC ETFs. They were in downtrends, but you can see here that there are some new uptrends in the printing ETF, the ARC Financial Innovation ETF, the Industrial Revolution ETF, Innovation, and Next Gen Internet. And the easiest way to find these new uptrends is if you scroll and you just click, and there you can see you sort by new uptrend there, and you can see all the new uptrends. And then there's a link over on the right to a sharp chart that has some comparable indicators, not the exact indicators, but some comparable indicators. Now I'm running out of time, but I'll go over this real brief briefly. There's also a rank sort. And so we can sort to see the strongest ETFs out there and then you reverse sort, and you can see the weakest ones. And these are ranked by their stoke close values. And you can see the weak ones are all in downtrends, and the strong ones are all in uptrends. So if you'd like to know more about TrendInvestorPro.com, you can click on the link below in the description. Again, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Stock Charts. Thanks again for tuning in. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you again next week. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.